Is this the S-Class of vans now? The new updated Mercedes V-Class here with Thomas and Autogefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go with the most obvious change here. The standing star on top of the hood for the first time here in the Mercedes van or for the V-Class. What do you think about this decision? Tell me in the comments. It will be a very interesting discussion. Also the front grille, wider and higher, a lot of chrome use right here and then also optional illumination for the front grille recently presented with the e-class now here also in the v-class in this top trim we're also going to show you the different trim levels but let's keep it with the exclusive the top trim for now new daytime running light signature and overall new headlamps here the multi-beam led standard for the exclusive optional for some other trims and graphite gray is the vehicle color here for this exclusive trim wheels new with aerodynamic designs 17 to 19 inch. These are the big 19 inch wheels, the biggest one available. And yeah, this aerodynamic design always splits in love and hate. What do you think? Different length and wheelbase are available. Actually three different lengths and two different wheelbase. And this one here is the short wheelbase, but with the longer overhang, it is also the most bought variant. So always a tricky thing to bring some design elements to this van segment. And they tried that here with the facelift with this update here with new signature for the tail lamps. And there's also now this Mercedes-Benz lettering, you know, a little bit more obvious right here. And turning indicator check, yeah, pretty cool in the front. And in the rear, it follows the form of the new tail lamp signature. Big news in the interior. First of all, door closing sound. Mm, that's nice, really solid indeed. Then the door doesn't open that wide, so for easy entry, mm, not the best. And then the new updates here. First of all, new steering wheel with a new design. It looks quite cool. However, now hashtag capacitive BS buttons on the steering wheel. They look cool, but hard to control while driving. And then you have now everything digitalized as for this display here, or these two displays, two times 12.3 inch digital instruments and also the new MUX infotainment system. So you get the passenger car tech here now also for the van. With the exclusive line, sadly only animal skin and no alternatives they offer. Hmm, that's a very strange decision. So sustainable luxury is not yet arriving in the vans. You can get only fabric seats in base versions, but no high class alternative. Then, however, the seating position, you have this high command driving position. You also have the electric seat control at the inside of the doors and they still give you haptic feedback. That's actually quite cool. So you feel, really feel like your own bus driver, so to speak, steering wheel up and down, in and out. It's a very smooth process indeed. So it's a very, very likable driving position here. And you feel that you get, you know, this luxurious passenger car feeling already then here in this van segment. Headroom with 189 or 62, of course, no problem at all. And here we also have this really nice exclusive microfiber ceiling. That's lovely, especially in this beige color. This is your new command central. Once again, with the screens, looks more modern, definitely. Also new decor elements, different stylings are available. This one more, this brushed aluminum look, I would say, and also new air vents, especially here when you look over to the side, this turbine style, left and right, and also then here in the central part, like this. Climate unit is still manual and nice clicking sound feedback. And this then here, your command central to open the door. Sliding doors on both sides are now standard. Just the electric one is either an option or standard also here for the exclusive line. And then, you have this touchpad still that you can control a different way the infotainment system while driving. And this is a driving mode selector. Interesting that dynamic says um, here you can also go to sport mode and so on. And it's really interesting. This exclusive line here gets a sport suspension, so a stiffer suspension. Does that fit? I would expect that the top luxurious version is rather maybe even softer in the ride. What do you think about this? Lower middle console with two USB-C chargers and new also inductive charging pad. If you wonder, these stickers, by the way, these are for embargo studio shootings because they're afraid we released the material earlier than allowed. Yeah, um, always tricky. <laughs> then here you push the capillaries or can push them in again. And this rubber mat here for the inductive charging pad, you could also actually just take out. Digital instruments, you can change the stylings right here. For example, also to a sporty view here for the V-Class. New feature, 64 colors for the ambient lighting. And then you can 
also adapt them here in the infotainment system. Of course, like this one looks also is pretty cool. So yeah, whatever you prefer or also multi-color designs are also available. MUX infotainment system, you see here, decently responsive. It's not an all new version like in the Mercedes E-Class, but it obviously does the job here. Also nice visualization here for the new V-Class front. Here like the avant-garde design, not the exclusive. And wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection. As I said, new with the update or with the facelift here now is that you have two sliding doors. So one on each side, standard for all V-Class models. An electric here for the exclusive or an option for the other trims. And here, these are the optional executive seats for the rear. You can also get that one for an avant-garde trim, but here then fitting for the exclusive trim. Once again, sadly only an animal, animal skin. You have different controls here, uh, seat heating, seat cooling, not activated here at the moment, but what we can show you as well is here the reclining seat function. They do give you some feedback here also for the front footrest. And let's see how the comfort is actually. I slide the seat all the way back and then I can take like this sleeping position here, taking it all the way back and also then here for my feet, moving it up. Let's see how far it goes. There we go, like this, and let's see how far back it goes here. Yeah, like this. So this will be the sleeping position. Um, yeah, the, the, here the microfiber cushions here at the top, they are really cool. Other than that, um, you know, you can be transported in that way. Uh, would I feel the same as I would be driving in a luxury sedan in that position? Kinda not. Um, you feel like you would be like a little bit like sliding off the seat, you know, a little bit too easy. So I guess that because in the sedan position you're a little bit more backward like this, but that's, you know, talking on a high luxury level. What is better here actually that you have this more roomish, really spacious feeling with the panoramic roof. You can also open there in the front, so that's the cool thing about it. If you don't want to use the sleeping function, you can also manual slide this seat forward, even until like here. <laughs> yeah, but just take an old position and use this manual footrest. New deco elements also appear then at the driver's seat or co-driver seat at the back part. And then this is this executive tray you can fold out, really massive hinge. There we go. And um, it goes a little bit towards you. Maybe that's then good for like laptop working, but you can see the problem is that it's a little bit offset, you know, so it's not directly straight. But when I go then to the front, would like to work then here. First of all, my knees are hitting it from below and then it's kind of like offset to the left. In the rear, it's always pretty cool that you can just open this glass part here and then reach through and maybe get things out and so on. This is here the setup, by the way, when these executive seats are all the way reclined back. You can see you still have some luggage space in, and this is the only like the four per two, yeah, two, two, four person setup here for the V class. You can, of course, also open the hatch completely. You can take a detailed look. In this case, also the electric hatch. There we go. And even more important is, of course, you know, when you don't go for this executive version, not everyone will go for that, of course. We also have the other trims for you. And now to the most sold version, also a new grill for the avant-garde trim. Really wide and high, but here then with two horizontal fins here, chrome style, and these nice individual Mercedes stars but no standing star on the top, that would be too much. High-tech silver is the color right here. And then we have 18-inch wheels on the sides, so not the biggest ones, but I think totally sufficient. I also prefer this design. Same wheelbase, the short one with the long overhang, but you can really vary that. So the avant-garde is available in all different lengths and wheelbase. And once again, two sliding doors. And we have a different interior now, not the executive seat, more than normal ones. This then is here 222, two, two, so over six people, but it could also house maximum of eight people if you take two through bench each. The seating comfort here, also in the rear, is of course not really comparable to the executive seats, but here you sit also pretty upright with 189 or 6 for 2. You see you have some room here to the roof, not too much, so you shouldn't be too tall actually. And then you can get extra equipment, for example, then here this um, middle table area. Yeah, 
that way you can pull it out but you can press this here to make it higher and also fits with my knees like this and this and this you can you know actually this is maybe even better for work of course like once again a little bit offset but this is also good for you know for some food some picnic area and, and so on like this and you can also easily store that again this mbux update and so on also counts for this here the avant-garde trim with the new mbux infotainment and different decor elements first of all i think it's really cool that we don't have high gloss black here but the matte black area and my most favorite feature is the matte wood here this huge matte wood insert you can also hear it and feel it that's cool and brings so much more exclusivity um, like exclusive feeling to the whole interior I like this one actually better than the exclusive one, or what do you think? In the rear here, of course, once again, this split glass opening. Let's open it completely. And what I want to show you is it has actually substantial width in the trunk here as well. It's like 120 in meters or 47 inches. And there you can see this is the third seating row. And until the sliders begin, you have like 50 centimeters or 20 inches, but of course, you would need to move the second row a little bit more forward that you can also probably sit in the third row. Now let's take a look at the AMG line and you see from the grill it looks kind of similar just like the avant-garde and the reason for that is that the line itself on a configurator basis is the avant-garde and the AMG line is just a package on top of that. So the grill stays the same also with this star pattern and what it's changed is then here these lower fake air intakes, I would call them, this graphic in the lower left and right. This is then the AMG line pack in this case and also here with the contrast right there. Nevertheless, if you want a little sportier look, that you know would be your possibility. Also changes to the interior and of course you have AMG style wheels. That's the most typical thing here. You know, with the Sporter style AMG badge, also with this aerodynamic function. And these are also the 19 inch wheels, so the biggest size is available. Rock crystal white metallic it is. So in white, it also has a pretty massive appearance, hasn't it? Let's take a look at the rear because there the new tail lamp signature forms a very nice contrast to the white. And we also have this additional plate here when it's really clean and you know, not scratch at all. That looks also pretty cool. Let's take a look in the rear here. So what else you can get? You can also get this split here for the trunk, for example. Then you can slide it up like this, have some space underneath. So, so many configuration possibilities for all the V-Class versions. And make no mistake, I mean, sometimes these vans, they kind of, you know, don't look so cool and you might think yeah like an XS class is so more exclusive more expensive make no mistake like the vehicles we show you here today are way above 100,000 euros or dollars and we're like really yeah really high in the price I always see it as a problem in the way of yes of course it's a very exclusive van but then again I think like vans are usually for families and shouldn't they be more affordable what's your take on that here the AMG line in the front what I find quite cool is that you can also get these more sporty inserts if you prefer this. It's like this carbon fiber style, even more obvious on the right side. So this is then the sportiest interior trim. If you wonder, by the way, access to the third seating row, there's a lever back here in the second row and then you can fold it forward and easily access the second row like this. Of course, there are also configurations, for example, where these seats are facing backwards that's also possible and you can also take out the whole seat under the hood there's the two liter four cylinder diesel this is the main powertrain for this vehicle here either rear wheel drive or also all wheel drive versions are available the petrol one is so far only available in china but they're now thinking of maybe extending that we cannot take a look under the hood because they say it's a prototype vehicle and it's super secret under the hood maybe there's something else to come I don't know yet, but we will definitely keep you updated. And next to the combustion engine side, there's also the pure electric one. And we have the all electric EQV here in Kalahari Gold. Wow, I mean, that's the most impressive color here for today, isn't it? And then the front grille, also wider and higher, but then in this rather closed form because the electric version does not need so much cooling. When you come around, once again, the new Datum 
running like signature and here 18 inch wheels we've seen them before once again i think that's enough here with the black contrast to the kalahari gold two different battery sizes are available 60 kilowatt hours or 90 kilowatt hours some of the problem here is that the consumption is really high around 30 kilowatt hours on modern kilometers that means that the real world range even for the bigger battery is somewhat around 300 kilometers or some 200 miles and i mean that works for example if you have a shuttle service where you only go in the city or something towards the rear this is also the the same wheelbase and the same overhang like the other versions we have here and this is also a similar setup also with the new stamped in mercedes-benz or this big lettering here the interior what is special with the eqv is that you get some more you know some more progressive materials here for mm -hmm. example at the top of the door this is neoprene like neotex material and you also get it on top of the dashboard to give this blue contrast to it and you can also pick the different decor elements insert here the illumination at the air vents is always nice to see and they also have some cool clicking sounds don't they for the eqv special thing is no there's no front under the hood but this one always comes with front wheel drive and another color for you is sort of light blue here with the marco polo version the camper van you can see here with this roof tent all the way up so overall actually four adults could sleep in this vehicle on the exterior we also have the 19 inch amg wheels here in the black styling that looks fancy and here also with black mirror caps at the side let's take a look inside because that's a special thing with that one avant-garde front grille and then here we go with this camping side there's the wood on the floor well this wood styling i would say when i feel it now so that's not real wood but then there's this kitchen or kitchenette that's why you don't have the second sliding door here with the marco polo of course you can also just store everything in this case then is set up here with the small two bench so either sitting here or even with 189 or 602 you can even stand up here with the roof tent all the way up and yeah there's come come inside come inside and then there's like even more space here there we go then you can see i can easily stand here and then there's also this you know this uh, top window here for example so there we go i can even open that one it's pretty cool i can also put the pan out of the window here we go so and then of course you could also put the upper bed down to take a nap there the sleeping setup will not change we have tested that out for you already in this video and also driving will not change with the facelift or the update here so we can check out the driving review of the v-class 